Uh, we asked our viewers uh, what they would like to ask you. We got 1,500 responses. Derek <laughs> Scott from Twitter has a question about your tax plan. He says, how won't the middle class be affected by repealing the Trump tax codes? Because the Trump tax code that I'm talking about, $1.3 trillion, the Trump tax cut, is what's going to be repealed. Nobody making under $400,000 will see a penny in their taxes raised, period. Guarantee, guarantee. And what's going to happen is we're going to have an impact on being able to give significant relief to people making middle class folks by making sure they can have child care and a whole range of things, health care across the board. For example, if you just raise the corporate tax, it's down to 21 percent. It was in the 30s. If you just raise it to 28 percent, that raises one trillion three hundred billion dollars. We're telling you that's that that's enough to pay for. Um, all a um, um, majority of things we're talking about here. People are worried um, with our manufacturing jobs, we have a lot of yes. manufacturing here in Toledo, that your <clears throat> environmental and climate deal will be a job killer and do more mm -hmm. harm than good. Are there guarantees that your plan will not kill our manufacturing jobs Yes, in matter of fact, they'll create more manufacturing jobs. Moody's and Wall Street did a detailed analysis of my plan and the President's. This is not a Democratic think tank, Moody's and Wall Street said my, my plan will create 18.5 million new manufacturing, new jobs, good paying jobs. Going to be 7 million more than his plan would create. Secondly, we're going to raise an additional $1 trillion in growth in the economy as a consequence of it. Give you an example. You know, when you see, when you hear about uh, when Trump says climate change, he thinks hoax. I think jobs. We're going to have to make sure that we provide for the ability of, for example, retrofitting four million buildings and two million homes. That's create a million good paying union jobs from IBW workers across the board. And it's going to save billions of hundreds of millions of barrels of oil. And so there's a, we can great, create work, not, not lose work, infrastructure. The president was talking about an infrastructure plan, 17, 18, 19, 20. Guess what? He hadn't come up with a single solitary plan. What I'm going to do is invest money in making sure we rebuild our highways, our ports, our bridges, our airports. That's going to generate a lot of income, and it's going to provide good jobs. For, it goes on, but I know we only have a little time. Right. What about the auto jobs? You pledged to create one million good-paying auto jobs. How do you plan to do that during a pandemic? Well, it's going to take a little bit to do it. And what we're going to do is, for example, we're going to make sure that we install 500,000 charging stations on our highways and the green highways we're going to be building, which are above the floodplains and like. And we're going to make sure that we have, are able to, the, as President of the United States, I'll have control of one of the largest auto fleets in the world. We're going to move those towards electric vehicles. China is now stealing the electric vehicle market. It's estimated that if we are able to make the investments we want to make in electric vehicles, we'll create a million new automobile jobs. They're not my estimates, they're Wall Street estimates. Speaker Pelosi has been talking about the 25th Amendment recently. There are some Trump supporters who are concerned that if you get elected that uh, Kamala Harris will have more power than a traditional vice president. What do you say to that? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. Um, criticism usually of me is that I, uh, the opposite happens. Um, I won the nomination against over 24 people, I think it was. Um, I am hoping to do well in this race. I'm in uh, very good health, and uh, if you notice, uh, I'm the guy that they talk about the president keeps trying to hang the socialist label. I beat the socialist. He's running against a phantom person. This is Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Look at my record. What about regular jobs during the pandemic? We've talked about auto and manufacturing. Um, what are you going to do on day one? You're going to be inheriting this economy. Mm. It is your economy if you win. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to have to, we're going to create a public health core as well. We, what we need in the United States is a public health core that in fact can provide for jobs for literally over 400,000 people over the first couple of years. We're going to generate, we got to get this COVID virus under control. But also we're going to make sure that we're in a situation where we raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. But in the meantime, what depends on how badly he leaves me what economy leaves them with. The House has already passed billions of dollars to help bail out companies that are going, small businesses that are going under, being able to have money to open up schools safely and businesses safely. 
I'm going to dip into that money. I'm going to get that done again, and we're going to spend it and grow the economy. Just like, I'll, I'll say one last thing. When we had inherited the worst recession in history, short of a depression, the president put me in charge of the $800 billion. What we did was we created the most fastest growing economy in a long time, most successive months of continued economic growth, left it to him and he squandered it. But the point was we invested in the community, we invested in five, right now you're going to start having to lay off firefighters and police officers and nurses and docs and in public hospitals because as Mitch McConnell and the president seem to say, well, he changed his mind all the time, but let them go bankrupt. We provided for, when I managed that, that fund, we put $148 billion in the state and loca localities because they have to balance their budgets. The founders were pretty smart. They allowed the federal government to deficit spend in order to compensate for these kinds of things. And guess what? The, the deficit went down, we moved forward, and we created lots of jobs. You just have to invest. Invest in what needs to be done to keep the states and communities alive. Keep those cops on the job. Keep the firefighters. You're going to start seeing right here, Fox News, you're going to start seeing cops being laid off, firefighters being laid off, school teachers being laid off. Why? Because you have to balance the budget. And this president spent more time in his sand traps and his golf courses rather than calling the Congress together to get something done.